Today is our last series, last in this series on honor. Uh, th- we do have a lot of messages on honor. I think maybe 30 different messages on honor. If you want to go to our website, you can actually get those. Um, we have message, a whole series on honor. Then there was love, faith, and honor. And then there was uh, honor, faith, and favor. Yeah, it's a, Pastor, Pastor Nick knows. And so we have a lot. If you want more, there's a lot more. I'm just not going to preach all of it. Um, we're going to start a series on movers and shakers next week. And uh, we're going to start moving some stuff and shaking some stuff. How many of you guys, you know, you need to move and shake some stuff. Get some stuff handled in the spirit and move some mountains and shake up some stuff in your life. And, and let's, let's move on to our next level. Let's do some great things for God. I, I'm, I'm refusing to be regular. Anyone refusing to be regular? I'm just, not, I'm not made for regular. How do you know? Well, because I don't have a heart for regular. <laughs> if you have a heart for regular, then you're made for regular. But I, I don't want to be regular. I don't even like regular coffee. And I for sure don't like decaf. Don't even try to be no decaf. Why that decaf? I want the potency. I, I'm drinking this stuff for the jolt. It tastes good, yeah. And it jolts good, too. I want the, <laughs> how many of you guys want more? So today we're talking about, we're going to finish off with, with the, um, a topic that I think is really interesting. It's called, uh, the topic is, who is worthy of honor? Who is worthy of honor? Someone say, who is worthy of honor? It's interesting because we, you are worthy of it all. And it's interesting we're singing that song to the Lord, you're worthy of it all. What a great choice of song with this message, worthy of honor. And as I went and I searched the scripture for when it's worthy of honor, it, it's really interesting how the scripture doesn't really, there's only one place where you actually hear worthy of honor, worthy of honor, and, and he's worthy of honor. There's other translations that say that people in position are worthy of honor. People being raised up in position or have an assignment is worthy of honor. Isn't that interesting? That, that, that you don't get worthy of honor just because you are nice. You're worthy of honor because there is an assignment that you are fulfilling or position that you're fulfilling. Amen. And everybody should honor each other, right? We shouldn't, but are you worthy of it? Everybody should honor each other whether you're worthy of it or not. But being worthy of honor is completely different than just honoring each other. We honor people that you, you and I know we would slap if we weren't Christians. If we weren't born again, you would just straight up just... Okay, not you, but if you were back in the pagan day, you would just like, if you were like, how many, you guys don't have any, you guys are so Christian, you guys are so nice. I still work on people that I'm like, Lord, I want to slap them. And there's something inside of me that needs to get delivered. So I shouldn't want to, I shouldn't want to just slap them, but I do. And, and how many of you know that there are certain people you can slap? Okay, I shouldn't say that, but, yeah, I, you know, it's like, anyway, praise the Lord. You know, I used to watch, I used to watch um, a lot. I used to love to watch <laughs> uh, uh, Westerns, Cowboy and Indians. How many, how many of you ever watched a Western in your life? I, I, I like Westerns. I, I mean, there hasn't been really a good one out since Tombstone. Oh, good. Oh, see, all my Tombstoners. See, see, Tombstone was like, hmm, I'll be your Huckleberry. Oh, that just gives me chills down my spine. Just think I'll be your Huckleberry. Ugh. Val Kilmer kicked that role. Okay, so anyway. Uh, you know, it's interesting because what I liked about about um, Westerns is that the hierarchy of authority was very evident. And and based upon your, your position or your assignment, you had a certain level of honor that came with that. So how many of you know if you were if you were marshal, you had a position of, as a marshal that that required a certain level of honor? The position all by itself. Uh, how many of you know if you were a sheriff, 
you know, like like Ir- White Earp, he was he was a sheriff, but he was he was kind of sectioned to his town tombstone. I mean, you guys are gonna know some tombstone history here in a minute. But the realization is that he, outside of that, didn't have jurisdiction, so he wasn't honored outside, outside of that, that realm of jurisdiction. He wasn't honored. The honor for him was in Tombstone. Outside of that, he was just like everybody else. So he had a jurisdiction that allowed him to go to this far, but beyond that, I lose all of my honor and I lose all of my authority. So when he stepped out and he went to make the arrest and have the fight at the OK, the major fight, when when you had the gunfight, it was outside of his jurisdiction. But the marshal who had jurisdiction, wider jurisdiction, was county jurisdiction. You understand? He he could go from this border to that border, from that state line to that state, that territory, because he had a, a larger jurisdiction. And so he was honored in a larger space. So when 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 Earp was outside of it, he did something, even though it was a good thing, it was criminal. And so he was arrested by the marshal. You guys tracking with me? There's two levels of honor. And then, you know, of course, there is in this, if I'm a sheriff or I have, you know, I'm a marshal. I have the ability to deputize someone. So Jesus is a marshal and he has his deputies. He deputized, he gave them a specific authority to function within a specific realm. Come on, somebody, are you hearing this? And so that commissions honor. That actually calls for honor when you've been deputized under the authority of Jesus. You've been deputized and you have a certain level, a realm of authority. So the enemies or the, the, those criminals or the villains, <laughs> they recognize that authority and they, they know to run or they know to fight, but they don't drink with you. Yeah. We're back, we're back. No, I'm not talking about right now at your house. I'm talking about like we're back at Tombstone. Yeah. So I'm trying to give you this picture because what I'm about to read, you need to see the jurisdictions in place. You understand? We read the scriptures and we read the scriptures with, 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 a, with a low level perspective of authority. But this scripture that we're going to read, we're going to start here in, in Luke 7. Will you guys read with me? Can I read the scripture here today? And I want you to see the hierarchy of authority that's being released. And based upon that hierarchy, there's jurisdiction. And based upon that jurisdiction, there's a, there's a demand of honor that must be revealed or released or received or given, right? So Luke chapter 7, verse 1, say amen if you're with me. If I didn't confuse you with Wired Earp, you're still trying to think, I'm going to go watch some tombstone when I get home, right? It says, when Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. And at the time, the highly, uh, at the time, the highly valued slave of a Roman soldier. Now, let's, let's see this. A uh, Roman officer, a highly valued. Now, how many of you know a person uh, that is highly valued has a certain level of honor? So he's not just a regular servant. It means that somewhere he's excelled in the Roman officer's house and he's risen in his service. And I don't want to say there's anything wrong with the person who is taking out the garbage in his house, but maybe he wouldn't call on Jesus for that person. You understand? It was the fact that this gentleman was highly valued that the Roman, that the Roman officer said, I need to get some help for him because I value him. I, 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 I'm, I honor him. Even though he's a servant in the house, he honors him. Because what he has done and what he can do and what he can achieve and how he leads in the jurisdiction that's in, that he covers in the house, I honor him. And so in this, I'm going to actually use my power to make sure that he's okay. I'm going to use the power of those who honor me to get power into his life because he honors me and I honor him. Are you guys track with me? 
Okay, that's just the first one I want you to see. And so the, at, the, at the time, the highly valued uh, slave of a Roman soldier, Roman officer, was sick and near death. Verse 3, and when the officer heard about Jesus, someone say he heard about Jesus. And, and you have to understand, if, if, you, if you hear about Jesus, you have a responsibility to make a decision. If you hear about someone, you make a decision. I like them, I don't like them, I honor them, I don't honor them. There's no neutral. I know you think everybody that meets you stays in a neutral zone. They don't. There's calculated ideas that are coming in a... You guys don't want to be real. You guys don't do that. You guys don't look up and down and look at their shoes and try to see if you... Okay. Outside, you pass the test. Your eyes are okay. All right, let me hear you talk, right? Then you... Verse 3, and the officer heard about Jesus, and he sent some respected Jews. Listen to these words. He sent some respected Jewish elders. Now, how many of you know a Jewish elder is also jurisdiction? They had authority. And he sent some, he sent some, some respected, not just the regular Jewish elder, but the respected ones, the ones that commanded authority, the, one that, the ones that commanded honor. He sent them... To Jesus. I love this story. I was telling the Lord how much I thought this story was just an amazing story. Because look at, he sends, the, 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 the officer sends these respected Jewish elders to ask, ask Jesus to come and heal the one that he respects. And if anyone in, 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 in these, these guys, these Jewish elders who respect almost nobody, They go in verse 4, and so they earnestly beg Jesus to help the man. You guys got to track with me because you got to, maybe you're not thinking in this term that I'm thinking, because they say in this next, this, thing, this part of the verse, they say, if anyone deserves your help, he does. They don't even believe in him. How much honor does a person have to have when they can ask someone to do what they don't even believe in? They don't even believe in Jesus. They didn't, tell, they didn't tell that guy about Jesus. He heard in through the grapevine that there's someone called Jesus who can heal people. He has a connection to that grapevine and calls up the people that hate Jesus. Are you not tracking with me? Because you're too quiet to think that this is not an amazing story. This guy, this, this official has so much respect by, by the elders, they go to Jesus, the one that they hate, and says, if anybody needs your help, this guy needs your help because we respect him. You guys with me? We're, we're looking at honor, how honor flows, how honor works. Who, who is worthy of honor? How come this, this official... Roman official has so much honor by the ones that don't honor anybody, really. How come this person has so much honor that he can ask them to do what they don't even agree with? They don't believe in. They don't, they don't accept. And it tells you the next verse. Verse 5 it says, for, the, for he loves the Jewish people and even built. <laughs> he uses substance. He used his substance to build us a synagogue. And we have more synagogues to build. So we need to stay on his good side, Jesus. We don't like you. But we like him. And he likes you. I think this is amazing. So, so will you do us a favor? Verse, verse 6. So Jesus went with them. Jesus is so cool. His jurisdiction can go anywhere. He's so highly ranked. He can go anywhere. He can go with the Jews that don't like him. He can go everywhere. And he so he goes, but 
before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to him, some friends, and says, Lord, the officer's calling him Lord. Lord, don't trouble yourself. Never met him, never heard his teaching, just heard rumors about him. Don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such honor. See, see, your position and your assignment that tells you what kind of honor you, you walk in, live in. And he's telling Jesus, the level of your rank, I don't know how to host. But the, the Jewish guys don't recognize his rank. He says, I don't know how to, I don't know how, in, in the word, the word worthy is this, I'm not qualified to host you in my house. You know, when we, when we, um, we hosted Rabbi Lappin, we honored, we honor Rabbi Lappin when he comes because we go to, we go to Nashua, which is a kosher, a kosher deli a kosher restaurant, and we try to find out because we, we want to eat in, in, the, in our office, but we want to know how to serve him. And so in, in that honor, we go the extra mile because we want to be qualified to host him. You know, he, 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 we, so we prepared, we had them prepare an incredible, uh, you know, selection of food, and then they told us how to do it, how to make sure that we don't, we don't defile it. Because I don't have the knowledge of, I, I'm not qualified. Come on, somebody. I'm not qualified to host him. But in order for me to host him, I, and I'm going to honor him, either I say, don't come here. We're going to go eat where you eat. Or I'm going to prepare my house because I need to be qualified. Because when, when I know that there's something on your life, I'm going to make sure that I know how to honor it. Now, his position, his position alone and his assignment gave him this authority. Now, what was the man calling for? He was calling for the distribution of the power that comes with the position of being the Christ. You guys with me? It's, it's slow starting. I know it's slow starting. And you guys are sleepy at the same time. But, you know, it, but I need you, I need you to understand that, that, that we want, you want to be honored and we can honor you, but it doesn't mean you're worthy of honor. <laughs> but if you have an assignment and you have, an, you have a position, then you become worthy of that honor because of your assignment and because of your position. And even though there are some around you that refuse to honor it, there's someone that honors you that they will honor. You track it with me, man of God. You, you track it with me, son. You got it, got it, got it, you got it. Yeah. Okay. I want you to get this because there's the fact is that some of you are trying to figure out what's happening and they, people are not recognizing your assignment and are not recognizing your position. And if they don't recognize your assignment and your position, they will neither recognize your gift. And we want people to honor our gift, but they can't honor our gift if they don't honor your position and they don't honor your assignment. And if you don't honor your position and your assignment, then you don't honor your gift. And Jesus is walking at the highest level. He has a position, he has, a, he has a, an assignment, and he has a gift that he's faithful with. He says this in, 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 uh, in, in Scripture. He says this in, in Matthew 28, 18. It says, and Jesus came and spoke to them all, and he says, all authority. Someone say, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So this is telling where his jurisdiction is. This is what his marshalling is. His marshalling, he has, he has a badge that gives him access to heaven and earth that causes his authority to rise above that which was given even to the, 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 the very, 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 very influential leaders and elders of Israel because they were giving authority here on earth. But not authority in heaven and earth. They are... White herb. They're confined to tombstone. But the marshal has the ability. And so in that, his, his honor, the honor that we give him is honor that has the ability to use their gift in power in heaven and in earth. How many of you know when he did this, he also gave you the power to walk in jurisdiction. He deputized you 
to walk in jurisdiction from heaven to earth. He gave it to you. I wish I had someone that was excited about that you actually have. You can shoot somebody in heavenly places even though you don't dwell there. Or or do you? The Bible says you're seated. Someone say, I'm seated. I'm seated in heavenly places. I and mean, you have to you have to know that you have jurisdiction in heaven and you have jurisdiction on earth because you've been deputized by the one that has jurisdiction in heaven and jurisdiction on earth. And even though you may find and encounter someone that doesn't know your worth, when you function in the gift, the gift will activate their idea and understanding of your worth. That's why the servant in a house who had a common place was now valuable because his gift. So if I don't honor my gift, there's no way that I can be worthy of honor because worthy of honor comes to the person who knows their gift, functions in their gifts, knows their God, knows the marshal, and functions what the marshal wants I want you to know God is looking for someone who knows their God and is going to create and display great exploits because you know the gift. I'm trying to talk to gifted people. You don't like this message if you're not gifted. (laughs) I'm trying to talk to someone who is into jurisdiction. I want jurisdiction because when the enemy crosses the line and comes into my house, I need to be able to go, hey, you need to see something right here. You need to recognize I am marshaled over this space right here, and you have no right. The sheriff is in town. and Oh, come on. The sheriff is in town, and something's about to happen. I need you to realize that there are things that the enemy is trying to cross over because he doesn't know that you know your jurisdiction. And he's testing your jurisdiction all the time. The bank robbers that these tombstone marshals were going after were always crossing the line, but when they crossed the line, there needed to be a response. If, if there wasn't a chase, if there wasn't, get them, get them, boys. If there wasn't a get on the horse and get on down the road, come on, somebody. If there wasn't, come on, if there wasn't, saddle up and let's get going. And some of you, you are not displaying your gift because you're not saddling up and crossing the line and going after the thing that crossed the line. If I just had a church that I can talk to, preach to, declare something. I want you to know God wants you to arise and he wants you to use your gift because when you use your gift, you manifest your jurisdiction. How long are you going to allow the headaches to keep coming? How long are you going to allow them? Oh, I just wake up every day with a headache. How long? Are you going to allow the enemy to cross that jurisdiction? How long are you going to allow him to keep on moving into a territory that is yours? How long are you going to allow this to happen? I know I'm yelling for some of you first-timers, but this is just the way we roll. And I wish we were different, but we're not. Yeah! I want you to get this. I want you to understand that God is looking for a person that says, I know that what is trying to happen in my life doesn't belong here. How long are you going to allow depression to crawl up on you? How long are you going to allow fear to crawl up in your life? How long are you going to allow divorce and the conversation of it to swing around your family? How long are you going to allow cancer to be in your world? How long are you going to allow this to happen? Someone needs to ride up, saddle up, get on, doggy. Come on, let's go. I want you to know someone has to rise up. If there's no rising up, there's no revelation of who you are and what you possess. The only reason that this this officer, this Roman officer was calling, this Roman officer commands people. He's used to commanding officers. He's used, and he instead doesn't send the commanding voice to Jesus. He sends a submissive, a subjected voice. Could you come and help me? recognizing a jurisdiction. When you offer yourself to help someone to minister, that's because you are standing in a position of jurisdiction and power and authority when you offer yourself to help. When someone comes and, and they are 
requesting or inquiring and requiring your help. You are now submitting to an authority. And you're showing your honor. When you say, will you pray for me? Oh, come on, church. You're submitting to the honor. And you're saying you're worthy of this honor because of the anointing or the grace or the the jurisdiction that's on your life. But when you have something that continually violates you, you need to either be able to activate your gift or you need to honor someone who has it. Because if you can't activate it yourself, you need to find someone who's already active. And when you find someone that's active, they can knock off of you and get out of your jurisdiction what's been violating your life. I, I'm not talking to the people, I think, uh, that has things that's been trying to take your family. I, I, maybe, you're not, maybe you're not the person that has struggled with financial problems over and over and over and over, or walls over and over and over, or limitations over and over. Maybe you're not the right people. Maybe I'm talking to someone online. Let me see. Is there someone online that would say yes, down in the, that would say, you know, I am not really excited about this, 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 this outlaw crossing over my lines all the time. That's the only reason God gives authority is so someone can say, no, you're not crossing these lines. There's no reason for you to have authority if there is no implementing that authority. You want a, you want a shiny badge? Why? You don't get a shiny badge unless you're going to shoot. Come on, somebody, let me preach this until I lose my voice. I want you to hear this, that God is not giving you authority, and Jesus is not walking in all authority, so he can get a banner going, I walk in all authority. He's saying something. I have the ability to kick stuff out of heaven for you. I have the ability to kick stuff out of earth for you. And I also have already taken care of everything under the earth for you. So at what realm are you allowed to be defeated then? If your marshal, it makes me just want to throw this. If your marshal, if your marshal has full authority in every realm, in every level, and, and, what, and what excuse can you come up with that allows you to tolerate an outlaw? The only thing would be is that you run with the outlaws. Oh, I got quiet up in here. A little bit of outlaw working up in this space. We need, to, we need to go. Jurisdiction is going to be adjusted today. I'm going, to, I'm going to secure my borders. I'm going to secure my borders. We're talk, I was talking to, you know, um, a friend of mine this week, and he, he's doing a work in, 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 uh, in Africa. And in this work in Africa, he's building out trees and he's building these tree farms, a tree bank. And as he's building out the tree bank, that there is some people who come and squat and they come and ruin and they come and wreck the, the tree. Just living amongst it, they, they, they're destroying stuff because they don't actually have any honor for the fact that there's someone there changing the economy and creating jobs and, and supplying one of the biggest needs is, is trees in that territory. And so they don't honor. So, you know, we're saying, how can we do it? How can we actually? So, so you, you, you first, he's got some armed guards. How many of you know you got to get some armed guards? And they walk the perimeter. And I said, shoot. Mm-hmm. You, you, you get some armed guards and get some electric fences. Shock. Well, you, know, you, you won't climb that fence, would you? See, when you, have, when you have a responsibility over an area, you can't make excuses of why it's not protected. He can say, well, I just don't know what to do with the squatters. Yeah, get a gun. I feel like I belong in Texas. <laughs> get, get a gun 
And if, or if you can, hire a bunch of people with guns and have them march the thing. And if, and if that's not enough, then <laughs> build a wall <laughs> and put some electricity on it. <laughs> because his stuff is being eaten up. It's, it's, a, it's a consuming force that wants to squat on his land. And if he tolerates it, if he just accepts it, the dishonor will be there. But only way you can get your honor back, only way you can force the honor in your life is by making the enemy know you have authority greater than him. And that takes an enforcer. You can't be political about that. You got to enforce it. TNT. That's what, that's what dunamis is, right? There's dynamite power. Okay, you guys, are, I'm, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on here. I'm going to move on. He, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews, he, Hebrews chapter 5. How many of you know as you turn to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, it says, honor the gift. I write, honor the gift. If you honor the gift, it's honoring the worth of the authority that gave you the gift. When I function in the gift that God gave me, I'm honoring the one that gave me the gift. Because there's no gift that's, you can't have a gift that is started by you. There's no way that something can be, the word gift means, thank you. Look at this gift I gave myself. No, you didn't. You did not give it to you. That means in order, and if you gave me a gift and you gave me something and you come around the house and I, and I want, I want some, some of what I gave you, you know, you gave me a coffee maker and I, and and I'm like, I want to try some of that, that coffee in that coffee maker. And you're like, oh, wait, let me see. Um, Gosh, where'd I put that? Wait, I got to get the ladder. And you open up the attic and you crawl up in the attic. How many of you know at that point, I'm completely dishonored? Because you hit it so deep, you didn't even know where it was. You didn't function in it. You've not even, and then you come out and you go, wait, I need to get some scissors to open it up. Yet that's what we do with the gifting that God gives us. How can you say that I use my gift all the time? Are you sure? Because the only way you can know if you're really actually using your gift properly is if you've identified your assignment. If you've identified your assignment, if you have not identified your assignment, your gift is not functioning in its proper terms. You may be using that coffee maker, but it's not supposed to hold your paper down from the wind coming in. No, it's not a Christmas tree. Are you guys understand? Because we say I'm using the gift, but you're using it wrong because you're not using it in its jurisdiction, in its place, in its position. It's now for you to be a barista, not someone that's holding paper. It's not a paperweight. And just because you're trying to use the gift because you identified the gift, but you don't want to identify the purpose of the gift, then you are wasting the gift. There's people that want to run around and have signs and wonders and miracles. You know why it's not happening for them? Because they don't even know what it's for. God's given me a gift of healing so that I can kick the devil out of your jurisdiction and give you your life back so that you can start functioning in authority in that way. God's given me the spirit of prophecy so that I can kick the devil out of your jurisdiction so that I can reposition you in your purpose. I will... I, I wish it was so frivolous that I can just walk around and prophesy over you. But it's amazing when you get prophetic words, why does everything kind of just start spinning around you? It's because you think I'm just trying to be nice and encourage you. But the fact is that I just released you back into your purpose. And the devil goes, he's no longer under our control. He's going to be now powerful enough to remove us from his jurisdiction. So now we've got to actually cause a lot of trouble to make him so discouraged. 
See, we run around prophesying in the parking lot over each other, not knowing that we are readjusting everybody in their positions, assignments, and jurisdiction. And the devil goes, they're just playing games with this. They have no idea what they're doing. This is a governmental assignment that you're working with. And you think you're playing Legos. Is this too much? Because I... I Thank you. I like that. I received that. I'll preach it. I'm going to preach it. Hebrews chapter 5, I received that. Preach it, preach it. Uh, Hebrews 5, 14 says, solid food. Someone say solid food is for those who are mature. So the conversation is about my maturity. Those who are mature, who through training. Someone say training. Another version says, by the reason of using, have their skills or senses exercised, honed in. Now watch, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between playtime and business? Come on, somebody. This is the problem with the body of Christ. We don't know when playtime is over. Playtime is done. The devil has, he's not actually trying to play with you. He, when he's trying to kill you, he's not playing He's smiling. I'm going to kill you. That's because he's crazy. Crazy people smile and say they're going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. (laughs) He's a joker. He's like, hey, hey, I'm going to riddle you while I kill you. You have to understand that the realization is that we need to know that the playtime is over. We can have fun doing it. We should have fun kicking the devil out of your life. We should have fun. We should have fun tearing him up. We should have, come on somebody, we should have fun getting you free. We should have fun getting you delivered. We should have fun taking over this territory. We should have a blast doing it. Why? Because I'm functioning in my gift, in my talent, in my ability. I'm functioning in it, working in it. Jesus thought it was fun to set people free. It's fun. You can't gather people and not be fun. Who through training, some say training. You want to you want to you want to increase your gift? Train it. <laughs> Train it. I I I it, it, you need to learn to practice. Practice and play are completely different. Practice. Practice it. Practice it. Practice writing if you want to write. Practice. Practice writing. I love this assignment that I'm in. Almost every week I'm getting an assignment from some magazine to, to submit something. Some of it's working, some of it's not. Some of it I, I misunderstood the instruction. I don't know, but I'm having a good time. And every, at the end of the week I'm like, I learned something new from me practicing. But I'm training something. I'm training a muscle. Come on, I'm training. If you want a gift to work, you want to, I'm gifted here. Are you sure? How is your practice in it? How are you training it? God gives you a gift. It's not full service. Well, it's a gift from God. I just wouldn't give God. You just don't even put any effort in. No, that's not how it works. God gives you a gift and you have to train that gift so you know the differences. Train the gift so you know the differences. If you wanted to increase, someone said, how do I prophesy? How do I prophesy? Prophesy. <laughs> Just, yay, my little lambs. Start with one. Someone asked me this week when I was in, I was in California, and, and I love that he asked because he's really interested. He goes, I know you're prophetic. I want to know how to increase into the prophetic. How do I do that? And I said, this is what you do. You get a prayer list of people, and you start praying for people. And when you start loving on people and you're exercising, you're training your gift, you're, prophet, you're praying over them. And if you write what God is showing you about them next to their name and then call them up next week and say, hey, how's everything going? You don't have to say I've been praying and this is what I got as a prophetic word. Just call and talk to them and what you've been praying will come out of their mouth and you'll confirm that you've heard from God. And I said, then after that, you get used to that. Then you go, God, now I'm ready to start getting scriptures for the people that I'm praying for. And then I said, write down scriptures and give them to the people that you're praying for. And then we took, I take them, I took them through. And I said, from that, you're going to go to dark sayings. 
He says, dark sayings? Yeah, dark sayings. Yea, my little lamb. You're talking about a red balloon and no one knows anything else about a red balloon except for the person you're talking to. And they're like, oh, I grew up with a red balloon. And is, I grew up living in a red balloon. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and you're going, man, I had no idea. I thought I was crazy. Everybody was around you going, are you crazy? But the, this dark saying is, it's for them, not for you, not for anybody else around you. See, you see the progression. I said, then after that, you're going to start telling the secrets of the heart. Secrets of the heart? You mean I'm going to tell them where they're sinning? I'm not, no, 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 no. We're not going to go after that. Stay away from that. I said, but the thing is, is you're going to start telling people, you know, when like, like Saul, uh, like, like the prophet said to, to Saul when he's looking for the donkeys, hey, you're looking for donkeys? Come over. I'm glad you're looking for something. <laughs> come, come to my house. I'm going to tell you all the secrets of your heart, all the things that are in your heart. He gets there and he goes, God is going to make you king. What? Israel's never had a king. How can you tell me I'm going to be a king and that it's in my heart? Because the moment you heard it, you go, oh, I would love it. I'll tell you secrets of your heart. I said, I walked him through this whole process. I said, but you don't start going after names and addresses and what's on the phone book. You start over here with, I love people, Lord. I love them. I love them. I love them. And you're interceding. See, there's a story in Numbers, the beautiful story. Can we read it for a second? Oh, I'm out of time. This is Numbers 20, and we're going to start reading at verse 9. So God says to Moses, he says, you know, people are complaining. The people are complaining. Some say they're complaining. And, and as they're complaining, man, it, God's, they're complaining about not having water. God says, Moses, I want you to do this. Go and get the staff from where it's placed. You know, it's now put away into a secret place. It's now put away into a nice holy space. Take it from its space, and I want you to go, and I want you to stand with it. Call all the people together. I want you to stand with it, and I want you to speak to the rock. And I want you to tell the rock to give out some, some water. Some say give out water. So he, he, he does this, and look what he does in verse, Moses, so Moses did as the Lord told him. He took the staff in verse 9 and uh, took the staff from the place where it was kept before the Lord. And then, and then he and Aaron summoned the people to come together and gather at the rock, and he says, listen, you rebels. Anyway, you guys have never felt like that. Listen, you rebels, he shouted. Must we bring you water from this rock? <laughs> this is what God told them to do. And you know, he's talking to the people. Uh, then Moses raised his hand. Someone say his hand. And struck the rock. Say it again, his hand. And struck the rock twice with the staff and water gushed out. He, stuck the, he struck the And the entire, entire community and their livestock drank their fill. I want you to see this because sometimes we think if we're going to um, we're going to scale to our next level. We think scaling to our next level is doing what we did in the past twice. <laughs> I can preach a whole sermon on that one. You think just because uh, you hit the rock once and it worked, you're going to just hit the rock twice and it's the right thing to do? That's not scaling. Scaling, when God wants you to scale, he wants to add something to you that you didn't have the first time you hit the rock. And so he says to them in verse 12, he says, uh, but the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, Aaron, because you did not trust me, did not trust me enough to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel, you will not lead them into the land that I am giving them. I want you to see this because there's something going on here that God's saying, you thought this was about you, the way you function in your gift. But the way you function in your gift is about me. The way you honor your gift is the way you honor me. If you, if, you, if you use the gift the way it's supposed to be used, then you shows that you trust me. But if you use it the way you think it's supposed to be used, then it shows that you honor and trust you. And for that reason, you can't lead. You can't be in this level of jurisdiction that you want to step into. Be you guys are getting quiet. Because, because your, your gift is on you to honor you. When I've gifted you to honor me, because when you honor me and you trust in the, the fact that your gift is going to bring 
glory to me, then you know I'll back up whatever you do. But if you feel like you have to hit it twice, when I told you to hit it once and speak, that means you trust in your ability to swing. See, the thing is, is, is in the reason, uh, it seems like it's a really harsh response from God to go, you're not going in. You're done. I'm done. You're out of my jurisdiction. I, I de-deputize you. That's a big deal. He pulled his badge off, left a patch open. You, you guys track it with me. I'm not even close to being done, but I'm going to have to show, I'm going to have to sh- close this down because you guys are looking at me that way. I need you to get this. Do you, it's very harsh for God to respond. And I said, God, why did you respond in such intensity? He goes, because he'd been practicing and training so long he shouldn't have made that mistake. The first time we see it, we see him, God says, take your staff and I want you to go to the river. Someone say river. See, he's had command over water a long time. Go to the river, strike the river, and the river responded to him and did exactly what it was supposed to do. Come on, somebody. Then then the next time you see him, he takes the staff. God says, go take that staff, and I want you to go to the sea. And I want you to strike the sea. So the Bible says he lifted up the staff in both of those terms. He lifted up the staff and struck the sea, and the sea responded. He has command over water. He knows his jurisdiction. I have command over water. And every time he's practicing, it starts with a river. It starts with the place that he was pulled from. He has command over the place that he was pulled. Come on, somebody. You have to have command over your past. You have to have command over your thing. And he has command. And he takes that step and he hits it and he responds it. And it will no longer control me like this again. His jurisdiction's increasing. Then he goes to the next thing. He goes, I'm going to have command over the sea. God says, stretch it over the sea. That sea, stretch it out. And he smacks that puppy and it comes open and it responds just as if it was a river. But now it's a bigger thing. His jurisdiction is increasing because he's training. He's training. He's training. Come on, say he's training. Little by little, it increases. Little by little, it gets better. Little by by the reason of your using. If he didn't strike it the first time, it wouldn't happen the second time. Are you tracking with me? It wouldn't happen the second time. He he goes, okay, that's great. Then God says, now we're going to take it to the next level. Call everybody together. We're in a place where there's no water. But I've given you jurisdiction over water. We're in a, we're in a desert. Everybody's, cr- everybody's complaining about not having it. See, you knew your gift worked when it was plentiful. When it was everywhere, you knew your gift worked. It was easy. Come on, somebody. But now God's trying to get you to use your gift in a hard space. When it's not easy. When it doesn't flow the way it used to flow. Can I take a little bit longer in this long-term message? (laughs) We're talking about an infinite message here. He then says, I want you to do this. He says, Moses, I want you to stand. And he goes, he first tells him where he's going to position himself. God says, I'm going to position myself across from you in this dry place. I'm going to be right across from you. And I want you to stand across from me. And I want you to lift up that rod again. And this time I want you to do the same action that you did before. When you hit the rock, when, I mean, when you hit the water, the water responded. Now I want you to do the same thing. And he takes it and he says, Whoo, and he hits that rock. That rock splits and water comes out. He commands water. Water will come from wherever it's supposed to. You understand? But there's a point where God has to disassociate you from the gift and know that it's in you, not in your rod. Otherwise, you will be your gift identified by your gift. <sighs> See, no, no marshal is identified because they, by their badge and their gun, the kind of gun. Oh, he uses Smith & Wesson, right? No, the fact is, is it's the badge, it's the ID that identifies him, not the gun he carries. And sometimes we get so stuck in the gun we carry that we think the fact that we carry that kind of gun is our ID, 
And so when God says, I want you to, I want people to see it's your ID is what's working, not the rod. So I want you to go up there. We're going to, and he tells him where he's going. I'm going to, the, the same idea as last time. I stand apart from you. I stand across from you. You stand on the rock and I want you to now have that rod in your hand so everybody can see. When everybody sees it, they think it's the rod I gave you instead of the identity I gave you. But when you speak, you'll sound like me. If he would have followed the training, he would have stood on that rock. Instead, the Bible says something completely different. I love the way the Bible says it says he lifted up his hand. Where before it says he lifted up the rod. He has, now he's doing it in his power. When you do it in your hand, now the jurisdiction's in your hand, not even in the gift. God wanted him to stand there and go, water come forth because I command water. Can you imagine what would happen after that? Because I command water, not my stick. I command water. I have jurisdiction over water. I have authority over water. Can you imagine having so much power of a jurisdiction that water honors you? So when he says, hey, you go over there, I'm going to make streams. Rivers. Springs. But you can't do that if you think it's about you. Are you, guys, are you guys tracking with me? See, if I don't honor the gift properly, that means I use it with my hands. Let me finish off with this. Luke 19. Woo! I have to finish it well, God. I have to do it well. I have to finish. I know I'm preaching an hour today. Is that all right? Is that all right? Because sometimes it happens, when we're, especially when we're finishing off a, a series. We got we to gotta, we gotta finish it well. Luke 19, verse 17 says, well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You have been faithful with little. I entrust, I, little I, I entrusted to you, so you will be a, you'll be governor. Isn't it interesting that you can go from being trusted with little to being governor over 10 cities? And what was the key to me going from being uh, someone who's just over a little bit to now However, that equates to me now governing 10 cities. Faith filled. Keeping my faith full of all of it. Staying full of faith the whole time. Looking at the rock going, you're still going to give up even if I have to speak to you instead of hit you. Come on, you, you're still going to do you're still going to do this. And what this is this is this is where the connection of authority and faith co- Lincoln, you ready? Because your faith is the key to your authority, your position. Your position, your assignment should give you a level of faith that other people don't have. Why do you believe God for this when I don't have a time? Because I have the assignment to do something there. You have assignment to do something there. You have faith over there where I don't have faith over there like you do. And so your assignment over there to that jurisdiction gives you faith in that area. And so I honor you in your gifted area so that you can swing your gift in my area. Jesus is sitting there and the centurion sends word through his friends. Don't worry about Jesus. Don't come. You can, you can just hang out over there. It's, it, you know, he's already dead. Don't worry about it. Jesus says, don't you know my jurisdiction? I can, I can heal those that are alive. I can create those that are not yet. And I can resurrect those that are gone. Oh, come on. He's saying, and I can do it with, without hitting it. See, see, the centurion, the Roman soldier said, all you have to do is 
All you have to do is say the word. Come on, somebody. All you have to do is speak to the rock. All you have to do is declare and it's going to give up. All you have to do is say. Are you tracking with me? Centurion go. all you have to do is just speak. It's different than, because we've been watching you. We've been watching you train. We've been watching you train. You're now at the place where you don't have to hit it. You don't have to swing at it. You don't have to force it. You don't have to shake their head. You don't have to roll them over. You don't have to kick them and slay them. You are now at the point where you just simply. Because this is not about what's in your hands. It's about what's in you. Jesus did this. What did he do? He turned around to all of the people that were with him. The disciples that left everything. They left businesses, left family. Left it. He turns to them and goes, oh my goodness. I've not seen anybody with this kind of faith. I would be Peter going, did you see what I left to walk with you? That's big faith. That's kind of insulting. No, but he's saying, yeah, yeah. You don't understand that when I speak, it's enough. The level of faith. And he says, I'm not doing it justice. He said, the centurion, he says, all I know is if you speak, it's going to work because I'm like that too. I'm a man that's under authority. I have authority on me. I have authority on my life. And so when I speak, everybody that's under me goes where I tell them to go, does what I tell them to do because I know what it's like to walk in jurisdiction. I'm submitting myself to your jurisdiction. All you have to do is speak. And what did Jesus say? Look at this faithfulness. Maybe your faithfulness is a sign of your jurisdiction that you don't give up your territory. Maybe you are that shama that's fighting over a territory that everybody's running from because you have jurisdiction there and they don't. Someone say faithful. 